Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. So the collection of Curland Province Museum undoubtedly is an important part of the Latvian cultural heritage. At the time, it was also a notable European-wide cultural and historical repository. However, even today, Latvians have problems in keeping this legacy without hard feelings and suspicions of colonialism or paternalism. The Literature and Art Society of Kurland, German Kurlandische Gesellschaft für Literatur und Kunst, in Mitau today, Jalgava, was founded by Baltic Germans, uh, their intellectuals, in 1815, about 100 years before Latvia was declared an independent country. The society was one of the very first scientific associations in Latvia, as well as in whole Baltics, being part of Russian Empire at the time. The society was a private organization, self-financed, based on the 18th century ideals of enlightenment and humanism. There is also an opinion among researchers that the society was just a cover for Freemasons, uh, who since 1822 were actually illegal in Russian Empire. Founders and members of the society were highly intellectual. All the in initiatives were based on their wide interests of the members combining both natural sciences such as math, chemistry, astronomy, etc., and humanities such as art and literature and also archaeology. However, the spe specialization of science was not that strict at the time. For example, professional artist Julius During, being a librarian in the society who had done several archaeological excavations at his spare time loved to study chemistry, astronomy, and other sciences. The literature and art society of Kerlin gathered the most of intellectuals from the region. In fact, today, the Latvian Academy of Science, established in 1946, sees itself as ideological heir of the society. The aim of Kerlin society was to serve the purposes of science as ultimate goal to, to research, develop, and cultivate historical, cultural, literal, art, historical, social, philosophical, natural, and mathematical sciences to introduce the local history and nature to wider public by maintaining the museum and its collection. The Literature and Art Society of Kurland owned the Kurland Province Museum and the Athenaeum Society, which had the same executive council, but different statutes. In reality, their functions overlapped. In 2018, we celebrate 200 years since the society founded a museum in Jalgava. The monthly meetings of the society and the museum members were, were initially held at the Jalgava Gymnasium Academia Petrina Conference Hall, but bigger annual meetings in the Kurland Nobility House Hall. Already in 1818, the society rented rooms in Stefan Hagen's typography for museum needs. In 1898, a new, mu new museum building was erected. This uh, was the society meeting room, and, but in the statutes of the museum and the Athenaeum Society, we can see that their aim was to serve the science by maintaining and enriching the collection of museum and library and making exhibitions. Furthermore, they had legal rights to organize or participate in archaeological excavations. The society also had annual budget for excavations. And it seems there was no general plan how to do research nor how to select monuments to research. Apparently, all depended on personal interests. Mostly, there were small-scale excavations or field surveys. The most widespread were studies of historical geography. Many researchers tried to identify in Hilford's the location of castles mentioned in written sources. Related to that were, were studied uh, ethnogenesis and linguistics. The chief interests uh, focused on territory of Latvia, especially Kurland. Archive documents show that the important aim of the society was to do research, develop, and cultivate archaeology, ethnology, and other sciences, always stressing that the collections of museums must be open to wider public. Once a week, it publicly opened, and indeed, the entrance ticket cost 20 kopecks, which was, which was quite much at the time. The pluralism of ideas ruling the archaeological science at the time can be seen in the exposition of Province Museum. 
The part de dedicated to the ancient indigenous inhabitants of Latvia attempted to sort archaeological objects according to the chronological and typological principles. The Baltic Germans already started to focus on ethno-linguistic uh, research in the archaeology of Latvia by distinguishing and exhibiting late Iron Age finds, artifacts, and monu monuments, attributing them to particular historical ethnic groups, for example, Kronians or Semigallians. The descriptions of the exposition make it impossible to discern a single thought-out principle of forming and displaying the collection. Even du during the 30s, with, with its uncritically overpacked space, the museum reminds more of a Kunstkammer, which is unsurprising since from its beginnings, the society was acting as such, drawing inspiration for the new museum from St. Petersburg's Kunstkammer and similar collections around the Europe. Members of the society had collected quite much archaeological and other materials, so soon enough, museum was a necessity. The Baltic Germans, uh, in the, the intelligentsia, did not want to stand by, while all across, across the Europe, more and more museums opened. For example, the Fitzwilliam Museum of the University of Cambridge, 1816, National Museum of Prague, 1818, National Museum of Denmark, 1819, the structure of the uh, Curlin Museum included Cabinet of Physicalities, Natural Historical Collection, Ethnographical Collection, Archaeological Cabinet, Numismatical Collection, and Art Collection. They officially assembled everything connected to the culture, history, science, and nature of Curland. But in reality, the museum was without its special collection management policy, besides Latvian archaeology and German art, also antiquities, uh, art pieces and items from other parts of the world were collected. Of course, it made the museum very, very exciting. The very first uh, inscriptions in museum's uh, archaeological inventory book from 1890 is, uh, 19, is a bronze Roman figurine and Roman coins found in the ter ter territory of Latvia. Uh, but for example, here we can see some artifacts from Lithuania, uh, we also have uh, some flint tools from Denmark, uh, probably the most uh, distant artifact uh, that has reached the Curlin Province Museum is this uh, stone tool from Florida in North America. Besides artifacts uh, described as archaeological or prehistorical, there were also sculpture originals and replicas from the classical antiquity and Egyptian artifacts which were seen mostly as art pieces. Uh, Noblemen loved to take some souvenirs from their travels around the world, which quite often ended up in the museum. Due to private interest and personal contacts of the members, archaeology in territory of Latvia developed and under direct influences from the news discoveries around the world. Society held monthly or mo more frequent scientific uh, readings which, uh, with discussions in the museum, the reports were published in periodical journals. The excavation reports and most of the received items are mentioned there. Therefore, much valuable information for archaeologists are still left for future analysis. Uh, the society exchanged its scientific publications with more than 200 regional and foreign scientific institutions. The archives and correspondence of the society show regu regular contacts with such institutions as Germanisches Nationalmuseum, Smithsonian Institution, and many others. Here I've listed only a few of them. For example, the Historical Society of Mecklenburg sent instructions for methodology of archaeological excavations according uh, to the typology of monuments. Besides institutions, society exchanged letters with private individuals, amongst whom were many prominent European scientists, sometimes uh, awarded the honorary member titles of the society or the museum. Overall, the Curland Province Museum and the whole Curland was mainly German and Germany-oriented. After the First World War, Latvians also began to focus on archaeology, but the Curland Province Museum be became an anachronism and unwanted symbol of German superiority. Government tried to find some reason to close the museum. 
1938, Baltic Germans started to repatriate to Germany and took some part, but not all, of the museum collection with them. Museum was fully closed in 1941. The Latvian National Historical, Historical Museum received the archaeological collection of uh, more than 5,000 items, which at the time was one of the biggest collections they had. In 1944, the museum was with huge part of the remaining collection was destroyed along the whole city. After many years, the fate of most of the rich collection is still not known. The today's Jedar Celia's History and Art Museum, where I work in Jalgava, considers itself as a successor to the Karlin Province Museum. It is located in the same Academia Petrina building, where the first meetings were held. And fortunately, Jalgava has regained the old inventory books and large part of the collection devoted to the Latvian archaeology. A problem remains the, the artifacts that are heavily damaged with 200 years old conservation methods that there's not much left of them. As here we see beeswax and metal staples. Today, there are many institutions in Latvia and other countries that have some parts of the former collection, like German Herder Institute has photos. And there was also made uh, descriptions uh, on the collection just before it was destroyed. See, significantly, the photos are luckily preserved. Uh, although many items have lost their inventory designations, I hope it will be able to detect and le at least some part of them may be, uh, may be regained. Uh, we can also see the photo, the, drawings in old publications, so there is hope. Uh, in Latin historiography, the, due to mostly political antipathies and historical resentment, we often criticize Baltic Germans for lack of scientificity and describe their actions as treasure hunting. But lately, there are more those who admit that it is not necessar necessarily true. The context of that age and overall de development of science proves that archaeology in Latvia ter Latvian territory kept up to date and was by no means inferior to the Western world. There was made also descriptions uh, uh, of stratigraphy, made photos uh, while excavations. So we see some scientificity already in the middle or in the beginning of 19th century. One quality that marked the this one quality mark that distinguishes treasure hunting from professional science is the attitude towards research object. When the most important for you is not the material value of the find, but rather the historical meaning of it, then we can talk about science. Of course, we can see in the museum collection, we can see many beautiful and interesting artifacts as this bronze jewelry, necklaces that are big and noticeable, weapons, uh, even Latvian ethnographical items can be found in archaeological collection. But as we see, they also have accur accurately collected other finds. Also, a very, very small ceramics, even coals were gathered. Although members of the society were not professional archaeologists or historians, their education, experience, and expertise allows of recognizing them as the founders of the archaeological science in Latvia. The society provided members with scientific education, literature, and exchange of experience, and it was a very modern and up-to-date project uh, as a great platform for meeting specialists of various fields discussing the latest discoveries. The first discussions about Latvian ancestors, their material culture, appearance, their archaeological heritage, and types of monuments started in the walls of Kurland Province Museum. And although now we can see many errors in their assumptions overall, we can't forget that at the time those ideas and conclusions were a product of up-to-date scientific reasoning. Okay, that was pretty short. <laughs> Thank you.